Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host Mark Fusco here for another special edition of the show. And I'm here at the Messina Hof Winery here in Stonewall, I almost said Fredericksburg. <laughs> well, we can either one or work. Hill Country. So, <laughs> up in the Hill Country. Um, this is a pretty new facility. I'm here with Steve Warren. And uh, Steve, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about you and the winery. Mark, pleasure. Welcome to Messina Hof Hill Country today. We are a new facility out in the Hill Country having opened a year ago, October 22nd. We have our parent facility in Bryan College Station for 35 years, being us the, making us the third oldest winery in Texas and Texas' most awarded winery. Uh, the Hill Country is booming in terms of business. It's where everybody wants to be. It's the second largest tourist uh, destination in terms of visitors, uh, second only to Napa, California, and we're gaining on them. Uh, we are the realization of Paul and Merrill Bonarigo, the founders of Messina Hoff. Paul is a sixth generation uh, Sicilian winemaking family. Merrill's family comes from Hof, Germany, so you get your Messina Hof. Uh, she is a lovely lady. Her business card says co founder slash mom, lives up to that every day. And they have brought in their son, who is Paul Mitchell Bonarigo. He's the sixth. He and his wife uh, Karen are now uh, working in the office with us, carrying on the family tradition. And I'm happy to say that uh, the tradition will continue. Paul Bonarigo the seventh just popped out of the chute three months ago and he's a lovely young man. Oh nice, very nice. And he's the torment of his older sister Sophia Marie. <laughs> that's that's what's supposed to happen, right? Absolutely. Okay. All right. So um this is a pretty new facility. Absolutely. Uh, when, did, when did this facility open up? We opened October the 22nd of last year. My co-manager and I, Don Lawson, came out six weeks prior to uh, opening day to kind of keep an eye on things and make sure the baby got born on opening day. It was a bit of a madhouse, but the cavalry from Brian came to the rescue. Opening day happened. A hundred people came in with tickets in their hand and had a great flawless event. Nice, very nice. And uh, we have 10 acres on property here. We have a west-facing patio, a north-facing patio that are covered, keep you out of the sun. We have four little B&B &B bungalows in the back that are each individual little works of art. Uh, they have antique period piece furnishings in the front. They have fully stocked little kitchenettes. Uh, bathroom facility is all up to stake. And a king size B&B &B and full screen TV and a little private patio in the back so you can sit back and enjoy the sunshine and wine. Nice. So we, we checked out a couple of those and um, you were telling me that um, you have more plants for expansion behind Absolutely. them. Absolutely. On our 10 acres here, we just planted Lenoir grape, which grows very well on our property in Bryan, goes into our award-winning rosé and ports and sherries. We have some vines planted here. We'll plant some more on the west face uh, next year. And now uh, when these vines are producing usable fruit, we will be building a larger crush pad, full-blown winemaking facility on the west porch over here to make local Texas Hill Country wine. And we'll also envision putting in a larger uh, multi-story B&B with, with kitchen facilities across our little pond in the back so there'll be more room for people to come out and enjoy the Hill Country. Nice. Very nice. So um, uh, when, did, when did Messina Hoff start out in Bryan? Messina Hoff uh, started in 1977. Again, it was a joint venture starting from the ground up with Paul and Merrill Bonarigo. Uh, they were on the highest elevation in, uh, in the county that Bryan is in, uh, making the best drainage for their grapes, the grow on property there. Again, it is Lenoir, which uh, makes, it's a sweet grape, also known as Black Spanish, makes some wonderful sweeter wines and dessert wines and our ports and sherries. Uh, they have a nationally known and awarded multi-story, multi-room B&B &B on property there, as well as a great steakhouse and a beautiful facility for touring. So it's just outside, uh, it's in Bryan, Texas, just outside close to Texas A&M, which I will must mention, or they'll fire me, we are the official wine of Texas A&M, thank you. Sorry, Longhorns. <laughs> My Longhorn hat's in the car, by the way. So, apologies <laughs> to <whomever. laughs> My bad. 
you know, at, at growing up here and going to Texas, you know, um, it, we we have uh, UT and A and M people. We have we, we're friends with each other, but it's a friendly friendly rivalry. Um, so I mean, I have lots of friends that went to A and M when I went there at the time, and then of course since I've graduated, you you end up you end up becoming friends with people, and then you find out that they went to A and M. So you, you keep the friendship, you know. <laughs> and go Johnny, go! <laughs> <laughs> right, Heisman Trophy. Well, and by the time this comes out, we'll know who had the Heisman Trophy. We'll see if we'll see if he gets it. They've done a terrific job, and they put Texas A and M and Texas football on the world map. And we appreciate all their efforts. Oh, Good yeah. luck to them. I do have to say, um, I visited A uh, and M uh, before I went before I had decided on my college, and I A and M was a consideration. Um, but I, I can remember being very impressed with the student body and going there and everybody saying howdy. I mean, literally, you thought you heard about it, but then when I went to campus, they, they all did. Whereas at UT, um, everyone has their backpack and has their, their head down to the ground, doesn't talk to anybody. True story. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. And that's, that's another reason that Messina Hoff exists in the state of Texas. Paul Bonarigo is a physical therapist, just retired by trade. He was stationed on the West Coast, transitioning to an East Coast uh, post stopped in Texas for a meal and at a restaurant and somebody just picked up the check didn't say word one he, they just said thank you for your service and walked out he said a town and a, and a state that that's friendly I got to find a way to live here so nice that's a awesome awesome um, I thought there was something else we were going to chat about from our from our, oh oh yes the gazebo you can kind of see it in the back we have a gazebo over there it's about 3,000 pounds of marble took six workers a week to assemble it. Uh, it is the main feature in our tasting room. People fall in love with it. It's, it's just a beautiful backdrop for weddings or group shots or bachelorette tours. Paul and Merrill bought that thing at auction in Houston 10 years ago, kept it in the warehouse knowing one day they would have the perfect location for it. It has come to pass. They found a perfect location for it. It's our beautiful nice. gazebo here that we love. Thank you, Paul and Merrill. And then we have the, you have the VIP room with that. We do. That big... Uh, okay. Screw. <laughs> <laughs> well, as I mentioned to Mark, there's a couple of things in here that are older than I am. I like that a lot. One of them is our featured piece in the uh, VIP tasting room. It's a 900-year-old French wine press. Uh, it's beautiful. It's big. People love to go touch it, feel a piece of history. And Paul and Merrill got that on one of their tours in Europe, uh, researching stuff to put in their beautiful facilities. So they found a gold mine there. Yeah, that's impressive. I mean, I had seen it on the website. But then I'd see it in person. I'm going to take, take some more pictures. Like we didn't take any pictures yet. I'm going to take some more pictures of that. Absolutely. I probably got to get a picture of me next to it. Touching yeah. something older than something, dirt. <laughs> yeah, older than me too. So, um, yeah, it's, it's got some great stuff out here. The facility is a beautiful facility. Um, you know, the, the cottages, you know, they, they look yeah. great. They were awesome back there. And we are just, we are so happy, Messina Hoff and my wife and myself, to be part of the Fredericksburg community. They have totally welcomed us all with open arms. There's not a better place in the universe to live. It's like Mark said, you'd never hear a horn blow on the highways, no matter how long the little old lady in front of you sits at the red light. If people just own their own time in Fredericksburg and the Hill Country is just a beautiful place to come out, sit back, enjoy some wine and relax. Oh yeah, I mean, I'll, I'm spending the night here tonight. Trust me, <laughs> it's, uh, you know, instead of driving all the way back to San Antonio, because then I got to go back out and back to this area tomorrow, and then I'll be in the Austin area after that. But you know, it's it's a, it's a beautiful area, and I love driving. Growing out here. leaps and bounds. Uh, when Paul and Merrill started in '77, there were three wineries in Texas. Now there are over 260. We have had four other wineries in the Fredericksburg area open up in the last year. We're just happy to have the, the business. They're just drawing more and more of our value tourist business to Fredericksburg area. And within a five hour drive of Dallas, Austin, San Antonio, Houston, we have a 20 million people customer base and they just need to come out here and enjoy the beauty of the hill country and have some wine. Absolutely. All right, so um, what? how many, how many uh, wines do you have here? We, uh, uh, we taste 44 wines in this facility, and at the uh, Paul Bonarigo's wishes, everything in this facility is 100% Texas juice. We're the only winery we know that does that. Uh, it just makes us a little bit unique in the uh, hill country. Uh, we do have retail counterparts on these wines, but everything in here is 100% Texas, and we just we, we like showing off what we can do with Texas wine. Yeah, we'll go through all the stupid things about Texas law with that but um, 
just just know that if you've watched the, the people who've watched the show before know that I've I've uh, soapboxed about the for sale in Texas only label. We won't go through that. <laughs> well, you ready to taste some great wine? I'm ready to taste some wine. Thirsty? So I'm thirsty. Let's yes. fix that. Let's fix it. Yes. That. So let's. What are we going to start right. off with? We're going to start off with something that's new to our facility here. It is a Blanc de Bois. It is a 2012 vintage. It is our one of our private reserve tier of wines. Okay. I do not believe we have enough to expose this to retail purchase yet, but we're working on that. Blanc de Bois is a grape that you can either make it a dry wine or a sweet dessert wine. This one is, is my favorite because it's toward the lean, crisp, little bit of minerality taste to it. It's just a great little sunshine sipping wine. It replaced my old previous favorite, which was the Simeon. We could not get enough good juice to bottle a Simeon, which again, crisp, lean, some melon, some mineral. But this is a wonderful replacement. It's now my favorite white wine. And then Blanc de Bois, if I remember, that's that's a hybrid? Is it an American hybrid? or Above is it? my pay grade. Okay. <laughs> um, I believe it is a hybrid, maybe between a European and American grapes. But, um, you know, it, I, I, was, I was telling Stephen that this has become one of my, I wouldn't say my, my next new favorite, but it's, it's up and coming for me because I've had a few of them and, and I've really enjoyed them. And uh, uh, we also discussed that there might be some that I may have had that weren't as good as this Not one, but <laughs> we aim to please. Exactly. Salute. Uh, salute. So I, I did taste this a little bit ahead of time, but just because I wanted, just want to get a little taste of it, but yeah, I, I get that that I want to say honeysuckle and that that mm -hmm. melon type of stuff and and I really like that on honeydew melon. I mean, Absolutely. that's one of my favorite melons is, is honeydew. I mean, I like cantaloupe and watermelon. Mm -hmm. They're all great and all, but well, honeydew I, melon is just. I, I'm a fan of albaneros, but you can't find a good one consistently. This has kind of the crisp, almost seaside minerality. And right. Kind of those perfect little companion to any kind of seafood, seashell wine, anything. And I think this is why, you know, now that I've been introduced to this, so I, I've liked this, uh, this, this grape because it, it's got that type of, it's got that type of flavor profile in white wines that I like. Um, nothing wrong with Chardonnays uh, or, or California Chardonnay style, but I like this, I like the crisp type Absolutely. of style rather Easy than drinking. yeah rather than the overly oaked and as, buttery. As we and, say, we <laughs> hope it invites a second glass. Yes. <laughs> Kind of makes you sad to put it down, doesn't it? <laughs> and to spit it out, but oh, but we're, we're doing a man. bunch of wine here today, so I'll have plenty of time tonight to drink some wine. <laughs> <laughs> Sip and enjoy and enjoy the sunshine Safely, in the hill yeah. country. There are worse um, places to be and things to do. It's it's got a great flavor to it. It's got a great palate to it. Um, you still get that honey that that honey and the honeysuckle. Um, it's got a decent amount of acidity. You know, it, I, I'm going to put in the medium to medium plus, actually probably medium plus in the acid. Um, so it's it's really great. It's going to help cut through some of those some of those sauces. Like I said, it'd be great with fish. And yes, we all know, at least my viewers know that I don't like fish. But <laughs> I did have some once, and it was a comical moment of me having fish with wine. Millennial but, moment. <laughs> but it did allow me to understand the whole reasoning behind uh, pairing certain wines with with seafood. Um, but it's really nice and crisp, and, and I can I can totally see having this, especially with stuff with lemon sauces, um, lemon butters, Absolutely. that kind of stuff. It, it it's great. And you, scallops. Oh, to yeah. That's yeah, not really the fish, is it? <laughs> one uh, funny story. Uh, back when I was a lot younger, I didn't remember the difference between a scallop and a scallion. So when I ordered something that said it had scallops in it, I thought it was scallions. So when it came and I saw it, it had these white things, I'm like, what's that? They said, <laughs> they said, that's your scallops. And I said, oh, I thought those were green onions. So <laughs> I, learned, <laughs> I learned early on what the difference was. Funny. But um, yeah, I mean, totally. Of course, chicken dishes, you know. Um, Pasta Alfredo. Oh, yeah. With some uh, yeah. capers on it. Yeah. Well, work. Carbonara. Yeah, that'll work. Yeah. Because <laughs> bacon makes everything better. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah. So, I mean, and, and speaking of that, so, well, this is, of course, after Christmas. I could see having this with a, with a Linguini Carbonara for at Christmas because that's one of our family's traditional dishes to have at mm -hmm. Christmas is, is to have that type of stuff. Um, we don't have it every year. Um, and Dad likes to have it with uh, his anchovies. So you put that with this, I'm sure it would be great. That's seafood so, yeah. too, though, isn't it? Yeah, it's kind of. It's, <laughs> it's, the, it's the smelly, stinky, nasty yeah. seafood that... 
put, gets put on pizza, and even if it puts on half of it, it still swims, the flavor Crawls swims to the other half. <laughs> yeah, we banned that in the house. <laughs> But yeah, this is awesome. I Thank like you. this one a lot. Glad you like that. I thought you would, and I'm, I'm happy to have it in the in the arsenal to shoot with. You awesome. Know? All right, our next uh, wine up is one of our Cab Francs. This is our Private Reserve 2010 vintage. It is double barreled aged. It's not a shotgun wedding. That's actually Paul puts uh, it into new French oak about six months or more, and then six months into new American oak, hence the double barrel gives it tremendously soft tannins and beautiful vanilla tones. Cabernet Franc is a real, it's a old Bordeaux blending grape. The French used to use it to take the rough edges off Cabernet Sauvignon. They used it to add beautiful inky color to wines and beautiful aromatic spice tones. And the boss said, let's just put that in a bottle by itself. It should be pretty good stuff and it's wonderful. And, uh, yeah, it's one of my favorites. So. It is. It's such an easy, soft drinking wine. Again, you can just sit back and enjoy a glass or two. Our previous uh, vintages of this last year's vintage was voted top honors in San Antonio Rodeo, um, called known as Best of Herd. Thank you. We also took top honors in uh, Houston Rodeo. That's that one. We'll get to that in a minute. We're the leading producer of Cab Franc in Texas. The little brother of this one is our Private Reserve Series took top honors in San Antonio Food and Wine Fest, which it was top red, not top Texas, top red wine out of 460 choices. So consequently, we sold out of those vintages within a week when the press hit, but the new vintages are drinking well. Uh, they're living up to their predecessors. So uh, Cap Franc is alive and well and living in Messina Hall. And again, I didn't tell them ahead of time that I like Cobb Franc. Now, when it, when he pulled it out, I was like, oh yeah, this oh, would be wow. good. I, I swear <laughs> I know nothing. <laughs> Same thing happened down the road. We pulled out a cop. well, not 100% Cobb, Cap Franc, but, Cap Franc, but uh, definitely uh, based on it. Spice, beautiful oh. aromatic nose, easy drinking. From day one, when I came out here to Messina Hall Field Country, the Cab Franc became my favorite wine and uh, kept selling us out of energy. So slowing it down, but not much. Right. You know, it's just get a those, beautiful wine. Yeah, yeah, get those great peppers, get that pepper aroma on here. You know, good minerality to it. Even get a little bit of earth to it, you little, know. A little bit of earthiness. And, and if you notice how soft the tannins are. Silky smooth tannins. It's a pretty tasty bottle of wine right there. Sorry, you have to spit, Mark. I'm not going to. <laughs> It happens. It's, it's the hazard of the, of the industry, um, and people still don't understand why. But it, it's it's just necessary. Let's just put it that way. Well, <laughs> you're a better man than I am. <laughs> I will pour a little out. I, I cry when I do that. This is. I, I love the palate on this. It's again the minerality still can, comes through. Um, really getting that pepper. Really getting that. Um, I, I, I get a little wood on it, um, you know, but I also have things where I, I kind of talk about things will taste like Texas, and what I mean, like, you know, when you're out in the country, you're out in the, you know, out in, in the woods, you know, there's a certain, there's a certain kind of aroma and feel you get that you get in your mouth. Yeah, an earthiness <laughs> that seems to only happen, well... Let's put this. I've only been out in the country, really, in Texas. I haven't really been out in the country in much, much other parts other than on the beach somewhere. But, you know, I, I can remember, you know, that type of that feeling or being, you know, you drive out in the hill country and you get those aromas. You could almost so call get it some the of terroir that. of terroir. It, it's got to be, you know. <laughs> and, and I do get that with Texas wines. Um, so there's something about it that I get. And it's not that I don't ever get with other wines, but it seems like I get more consistency with, with, with Texas wines. Yeah, absolutely. Or good Texas wines, put it that way. <laughs> because uh, it's you know we're all striving to improve. The benefit of the Texas wine industry has gotten exponentially better in quality in the last ten years. I think a large part of that is due to the influx of vineyard techniques, grape growing techniques, finding out which new grape varietals, whether they're European, South American, or wherever, that are accommodating to Texas soil. The quality of the wines is just grown fabulously in the last 10 years. I'm so happy to represent Texas wines with the quality being what they are these days. And I think that's something that people need to remember is that, you know, I, I think I think Texas wines are still having that, still having an identity crisis that they're not considered any good 
um, that anything outside of California, Oregon, Washington, and New York State is not going to be good. And I've had some other states' wines too that you know were surprising, but you know I know that. But I also feel that Texas is really the quality of the wines has really improved a lot. Um, you know, and it is because you have well, first of all, you have, you have the pioneers like Messina Hoff, you know, uh, that that have been doing it a long time. So they they they. I wouldn't say they've necessarily completely figured it out, but they figured it out. Got a pretty good handle. They got so a good idea, you know. They, then it also helps the new people. On, you know, and like you were saying earlier, you know, it's you're everyone's. It's a friendly, friendly competitors. Everyone's Absolutely. friendly over here. We're happy to have um, the business and the support. You know, and that 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 also just makes me think about. You know, there was there was a line in the Bottle Shock movie where if one person wins, everybody wins. So they didn't Absolutely. care who went to the Judgment of Paris uh, tasting. Just so long as California got represented, represented, and they did well, that's all they cared about. They didn't care who won, Absolutely. you know. And, and I've gotten that consistently from a lot from from people in Texas, mm -hmm. from the wineries here, is that while everyone is a competitor, they want to see everybody succeed. So, you know, it's 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 great. And of course, you know, Texas is a friendly state, so it should be expected, right? <laughs> well, I'm going to slip this in for everybody. We are Texas' most awarded winery, and we're happy to be carrying that banner. Thank you. And I can tell you, I'm very happy that, that you invited me uh, to come up here because, you know, I, I, Messina Hoff, and I will make it to Bryan eventually, um, but Messina Hoff in, in general is a place I want to visit. And now with this facility open, it makes it easier to come up and do that mm -hmm. um, rather than driving the three hours to Bryan, or not quite three hours, but. So I'm driving the, the two and a half to three hours out there. <laughs> well, it's, it's just the hill country, the ambiance out here, and the, and the beauty of nature and the great wines. It's just a tourist mecca, and I can see why we're the fastest growing tourist area for wine in the U.S., second only to Napa, but we're going to catch up to them. And wait, you literally could take this highway over there. I just... it's, well, it's actually I-10. We'll take you straight to California, straight no, to no, San Diego. No, no, Brian. Brian? The Brian, you yeah. can, and you got to take a couple of a couple of dog legs off at yeah. Highway Six and Twenty One. It'll get you close. It'll get you there, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All, All right, right. No, this is awesome. So yes, definitely buy this one. Well, uh, I'm gonna let the cat out of the bag. Mark also mentioned he's a fan of Zinfandel. I did, yeah. So I'm sleeping this ringer in. Uh, this is also my my home run hitter go to wine when I'm making a presentation to a restaurant or a country club. Uh, this is our Bell Brothers Zinfandel. Merrill's Vineyard, uh, James Rodney Bell and Freddie Bell are longtime premier grape growers in North Texas in the Plainview area. We are lucky enough that uh, they sell us their best grapes and they're also our vineyard managers for our property up there. Uh, they make a killer Zinfandel. This is my home run hitter. Everybody has tried this, nobody's ever turned it down. Uh, again, double barreled age, uh, up to a year in French and a year in American oak. It's just silky smooth. It's going to, to, to use a uh, phrase, it's an almost unzen like zen. All right. So enjoy. All right, so let's check this one out. Salute. Oh, yeah. We'll get there. We go. We'll get there. <laughs> the nose. Mm -hmm. it, it just jumps out. More of those, more of those that that white and black pepper coming out. You know, definitely a lot of minerality to it. The nice acidity, good balance. I can't hardly get past the aroma. It's wonderful. You just sit there and sniff a glass all day. So phenomenal. Can you see why it's my home run hitter? You say it's got a great mouthfeel to it. Um, it still it still keeps hitting with that minerality. Um, you're getting the fruit, but really the minerality is what's was coming through for me. Um, good acidity, like you said, it does have good acidity to it. Mm -hmm. And that's something that a lot of times you don't talk about red, with, with red wine because it doesn't. I guess it's not as noticeable with with white wine. That's really a, what you notice a lot. Whereas red wine, maybe it's 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 overlooked because there's so many other things happening with it. But it's definitely got a good acidity to it. And the complexity. There's a lot of, lot of information in that glass. We do source, like I say, we source their best fruit. Uh, the vineyard is 14 miles west of Plainview in the Panhandle in the High Plains AVA. Some of the best fruit in Texas grows. In fact, probably the best fruit grows in that neck of the woods. Uh, we source from over 750 acres across Texas of the grapes 
purchase for wine production, we buy 25% of all grapes grown in Texas, but we are very blessed to have uh, the Bell Brothers furnish us some of the best stuff, and, and they make some, some great wine with their juice. And I had a nosh on that salami there. <laughs> I was like that, that. That had to be that. That had to go with that. There you go. That's some good stuff. Thank you. That, another recommend. I would definitely, definitely recommend this. There you go. All right. All right. What are we are moving on to next? I'm fixing to hurt your feelings severely now, Mark. <laughs> this is our Solera Sherry. This took top honors at Houston Rodeo last year. We won top honors at Houston Rodeo last year and again this year. And I'm maybe letting the cat out of the bag. We won Best of Herd at San Antonio Rodeo last year and again this year. So we're doing very well in the award department. This is from the Lenoir grapes that grow on our property in Bryan. Uh, it is a true Solera Sherry, meaning three vintages and three rolls of barrel. <laughs> three got to keep the crew down <laughs> three rows of barrels three different vintages just filtering down and down and down to you where you get as perfect a sherry in the bottom as you can get they put this in the sun in Bryan, texas for 90 days and 105 degree heat bakes the bejabbers out of it and turns it into this wonderful sherry the uh this was at houston rodeo auction uh the landry's folks no plug uh, Tillman Fertitta and his group got together and purchased the auction bottle, a 9 liter, for $105,000. We have the sister bottle here for sale. We can make you a deal. And uh, <laughs> it's an etched bottle. It's just beautiful. And uh, like I say, all that money went to Houston Rodeo Charity. So that cannot be anything but a win-win-win for everybody. Caramel for days. Uh -oh. Cinnamon bombs. <laughs> yeah, that too. Cinnamon and caramel. Man. It almost sounds like a pumpkin cheesecake, maybe. What is that? <laughs> uh, my recommendation, especially during football season or when it, winter time, is get you some uh, vanilla bean ice cream, a little yeah. bit of this, pour it over the top. If you're watching the Super Bowl, you won't care who wins it by the end of the game. Cheers. Oh my goodness. Go Houston. Sorry. <laughs> I'll go. Well, I'll go with that. I'm a Vikings fan, but you know, as far as Texas teams, it's the Texans, not the Cowboys. <laughs> oh, is that is that good or is that real good? We don't spit these. <laughs> this, uh, you just, thank you. Thank we don't, you. We don't <laughs> spit these. Uh, <laughs> this also is an international gold medal winner at San Francisco International Festival, one of the probably top ten events in the U.S. This took double gold, so it's an international medal winner as well as Houston Rodeo. And I mean, I'm getting lots of apricot off of this. Mm. You know, it's it's mm -hmm. you get that you get the cinnamon, the apricot, the caramel. You know, it, it's. It's smooth, you know, um, it's real smooth. Absolutely. One point on our ports and sherries uh, at, at the winemakers, both of them, Paul Mitchell Bonarigo and his dad, Paul Victor Bonarigo. Uh, we do not add brandy to our ports and sherries. Uh, we're unique in that. Uh, the boss would rather you taste pure fruit than something similar to jet fuel. Uh, we're the only winery that we know of that takes that step to make a wonderful port or sherry. In fact, Paul and Merrill were invited to Portugal to speak before the Portuguese Wine Council to tell them how they made a wonderful port and sherry without brandy, because that's their style of wine for mm -hmm. 300 years. So uh, there's no brandy in there, so you just you can sip it all day long. There's no fiery afterburn from alcohol. It's just a great sipper for, again, sunshine in Fredericksburg. And, and what I did was I wanted to see what the alcohol was. It's 18%. You would pretty much never know that this was an 18% alcohol beverage. I mean, it's just, you, you don't feel the burn. You don't, because some, some Texas Fortune Sherry's go up to 21, 22%, maybe a smidge higher. And, by then, it's sometimes it's not a pleasant experience, you know. Well, an hour I'm drinking to just be, you know, porch sipping. I mean, if you want to drink 151, that's fine, but you <laughs> know, have done that. Have done that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm so happy you didn't pour yours out. <laughs> no, I, I'm finishing that one. Um, yeah, that, that's that's uh, 151 to me is a story for another time, but. Let's just say I enjoyed plenty of it at one point. <laughs> I've never done that. It's a story I won't tell on the air. There you go. All right, now we do have one more wine we're going to talk about. Okay. Uh, this is our Bow. It is actually our best seller at uh, retail, both in the tasting room here and in Bryan and at our 
retail partners, uh, HEB, Specs, uh, Kroger, everybody. It's one of our best sellers. It's just an easy drinking, slightly sweet red. It is a Moscato Shiraz blend, 25% Moscato, 75% Shiraz. So you get a hint of sweetness on the front palate. You get a little backbone and structure from the Shiraz, making it also a perfect food pairing wine. Burgers, pizza, pulled pork, spicy mix, spicy oriental, anything you may want to put the fire out on. This is a wonderful wine to do it with, easy sipper. I call it here at the winery lawnmower wine. If you get off your John Deere tractor, you've just mowed 40 acres and it's 105 degrees. Glass chill bow is a beautiful thing. <laughs> so it just people just like it. It's nothing pretentious, just an easy sipper. Uh, anytime we have an off-property event, like at our beautiful friends at Wild Seed Farm down the road, it's always the first one we run out of because people try it, like it, and enjoy it in the hill country sunshine. So let me get you. Now he's, yeah, he's twisting my arm on this one because. I don't ever want to refuse a wine. It's, uh, <laughs> all I'm saying is people, once people try it, it just boggles their mind. And again, when I'm doing a tasting off property, it's, it's one of our best sellers. Uh, again, I uh, don't want to confuse our viewers here, but this bow uh, has a slightly different label than what you'll find in retail because this is our Hill Country exclusive label, only available in Fredericksburg at the winery. Uh, it is a hundred again. This one's a hundred percent Texas juice. It does have a retail counterpart that you can find uh, wherever you shop for your fine wine products. But I'm just saying, if you try this and you've got a big party for people that want an easy sipping, slightly sweet red, which is a big category in the wine business, you can't go wrong with both. The name's a little interesting. The uh, French government got kind of kind of testy with us for trying to put Beaujolais on there said, no, no, you may not use that. It is our province name. That's right. So we changed it to Beaujolais. said, no, no, you may not use that. It is our province name. <laughs> so we finally shortened it to Beau, and we're happy to say they left us alone. So right, people so from that, <laughs> So that, that actually answers my question, basically. So this is made like a Beaujolais. Is it, it is carbonic Beaujolais maceration? Style. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Just a light, just crisp, like I say, a hint of sweetness, hint of backbone to it. Just an easy drinking red. And, People that aren't generally wine fans do find this fascinating and find up and wind up enjoying it. Now I'm going to tell you off the nose. This is what I get. I get big red. Now, so if you, yeah. <laughs> and if you are not from this state, you have no idea what big red is. Well, moon pie. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's. I guess you can't yeah, moon pie. It, it, it's it's a you know it's a it's a cotton candy kind of soda. You know, um, I love Big Red, by the way. Um, I'm sure Red Knee High is very similar. I've never had Red Knee High, but I'm sure every state, every area has its own version of, of it. Um, somebody else made something like Big Red, but Big Red is what I get off the nose. So, for the record, I like Big Red, okay? The second sip is when the Shiraz kicks in on the back palate, and you'll say, gee, there is a little something there. We hope. <laughs> we hope. All right. So, I, I like it actually. Who knew? Who knew? <laughs> which I told them, not usually a fan of Texas sweet, sweet red wines. No, but that is a huge category in the market. People talk dry for years and years, but they do drink sweet, especially when it's as hot as it is in, in the hill country and uh, Texas in general. So, a slightly sweet red is something that does appeal to a broad spectrum of the uh, wine drinking public. Especially people transitioning out of lighter wines, say a white Zen or wine coolers, they want something with a little more character to it. They can find that in both. Now I can tell you, this is not like much of the other Texas street sweet red wines I've had. Absolutely, um, it really does kind of give you that similar Beaujolais type of feel and taste. Um, it's different grapes, but it still gives you that a very similar. A very similar thing because you're still you're still going to get in an, an a Beaujolais or especially Beaujolais Nouveau, mm -hmm. you're going to get similar flavors and similar yeah, yeah similar aromas and all that. You're going to get very much the same way. Um, I do like this. Okay, I mean, so I'm glad I'm glad you poured it. I'm glad you said we should do it arm. because it's our top selling <laughs> wine. Because I was a little like oh, okay, because usually what I you know I told him was like if you have a sweet red wine, I'm just saying I probably won't like it. But he's like you don't have to drink it, but we're going to talk about it. Like, That's good. <laughs> 
But no, I do like it. I like it. You well, know? Glad. Like I say, it's just great for you get out in that sunshine in Fredericksburg, Texas, and enjoy yeah. some sunshine and wine. It's all good. Yeah. It's, it's you know, it's, it's a, I think it's pretty good wine. So, I mean, I do like some of the other ones better, but I would not for turn that down. Or side, that. Side, I wouldn't zipper. turn it down. Let's put it that way. Remember, remember that 105 degree lawnmower. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> in fact, we had a, a, an event at Wild Seed. Again, I mentioned that uh, people, we were pouring the bow and several other wines. People would come by, try a glass. So that's pretty good. They'd circle around, come back, buy another glass. Yeah, that got better. By the third time around, they said, just sell me a bottle. I'm tired of walking. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So it was a big hit. And it's usually a, the first wine we run out of at an off-site event. Very good. So awesome. Is, I'm glad you liked it. Thank you for trying it. Oh, See, my pleasure. Fan of See, you there did. you go. And I'm going to have a little cheese. There you go. And they kindly made this cheese and, and meat tray for me. So is that I'm going to finish is that, this is up, too. I've got, got flowers on there. Got little flowers on there. Cute. Mr. Hoover did that, thank you. Oh, awesome. He is an artist. I'm going to use this to kind of hide the, the cord, <laughs> the audio cord. So, um, no, this is this has been absolutely wonderful. Thank you very much for inviting oh, me. Thank you for including us on your list of Texas oh, absolutely. wineries. Absolutely. I mean, you know, Messina Hoff is, is well known in Texas. Um, hopefully it's getting better known outside of Texas um, because it, it's, and they make quality wines. I know because I've had other Messina Hoff wines before, so... Um, I, I like I was actually off camera letting uh, Nicole know over at, at Becker is that I try to pick wineries if I'm going to visit them that I either have a really good reputation or I've had their something from them before because I, I if I'm going to do an interview like this I, I don't want to feel bad <laughs> if I say I don't like the wines yeah, but um, you know absolutely it was it was a great pleasure to be here and uh, much success and hope to make a, uh, another s trip okay. soon well we we, we we expect to see you back soon awesome pleasure. thank you very much our pleasure all right folks we're gonna wrap it up uh, as always stop by the website hit the links above to friend me up I'll have links uh, to Messina Hoff uh, they'll have they have the Fredericksburg uh, website and they also have the Brian website and the virtual um, tours on there. The virtual tour, everything uh, you can look for wines to get. Uh, you ship to 22 states, right? We do. We do have an online ordering process. You can have it shipped to your front door, so we make it as easy as you can to enjoy Messina Hall Texas wines. Awesome. So yeah, do that. Hit the links below. Leave comments, and uh, we'll see everyone again next time.